Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Karthik and this is session 2 on the topic of Hadoop Administration and Operations. Now in the previous session, I gave you an introduction on Hadoop and Big Data. We also discussed about the various distributions of Hadoop available in the market. Now in this session, we will be comparing the various aspects of the traditional database systems with that of Hadoop. Also, by the end of this session, I will be discussing on a special topic of Hadoop on virtualization. Now, before we move ahead, I want to make one important point. Hadoop is not a database in itself and hence this comparison might be misleading to some of you. Unlike your traditional database applications like SQL or Oracle, Hadoop is a framework of many tools and components that work together for distributed storage and parallel processing of huge amounts of data. Now, there are many other applications that have been developed around the Hadoop platform, all of which come under the Hadoop ecosystem. Now, the scope of Hadoop is far bigger than your traditional database applications. Hence, a precise comparison between the two is a tricky topic, as Hadoop does not refer to just one component or application, but it refers to the whole ecosystem. Now, this is a general Hadoop ecosystem diagram I have made. The original Hadoop framework can be said to consist of two core layers, the storage layer, which is the HDFS, and the resource allocation and processing layer, which is the YARN. Then there is MapReduce, which is basically a programming model or technique for parallel processing of data. Now, all the other add-on tools and applications have been developed around this platform provided by these two core layers, all of which form the Hadoop ecosystem. Now, there may be more ecosystem tools than the ones shown here. There's a lot of development going around Hadoop and I have included only some of the known tools and applications. Remember that there is a lot of complex interdependencies between these components which I haven't included in this diagram. This is just to give you all a brief idea about what we are dealing with here and does not represent the actual relations between the various components of the Hadoop ecosystem. Now I'll start with the most notable operational difference between the two. Unlike traditional database systems, Hadoop supports what we call as schema on read. Now, the traditional database systems like SQL or Oracle work based on schema on write technique. This means that data can only be entered to these systems in a predefined structure or schema. For example, if you have a database for employee information and the database table has columns for name, date of birth, phone number and address, it will accept data in the same format and in the same order. If you do not follow the same format, it will simply not accept the data and throw a bunch of errors. This ensures that data is always accepted and stored in a predefined structure, which is then easy to query and process as you already know the pattern in which the data is available. Now Hadoop on the other hand doesn't have any such write restrictions. Hadoop provides a storage platform where you can store data in whichever format it is available. There is no predefined schema that you need to follow here. The idea is that you can bring in data in whichever form it is available but then you can figure out a pattern that suits your requirement later when you're reading the data. Hence, the burden of defining a data structure falls on the code that reads the data rather than the one that writes it. This is what we call schema on read technique. Now, there are several advantages of such a technique. Firstly, this enables Hadoop to effectively deal with semi-structured and unstructured data, which forms a bulk of the total data generated in the world. Secondly, this enables Hadoop to ingest data from a variety of different sources and also perform a variety of different analysis that would otherwise not be possible with traditional database systems. Now, the main challenge of this technique is that even though Hadoop does provide a powerful platform for parallel processing of stored data, writing these codes can sometimes become notoriously complicated. Hence, there are a range of high-level Hadoop ecosystem tools developed for various data processing applications. These tools simplify the life of a developer or an analyst by providing them a high-level platform that shields the inner Hadoop layers and its complexities. Now that we have discussed the basic operational differences, it's time to compare the infrastructure differences between the traditional database systems and Hadoop. I feel that the Hadoop infrastructure design plays a key role in its ability to distribute storage and processing, and hence I'm bringing it up so early in this course. Now, this is a basic visualization of a traditional database infrastructure. Now, remember, this is an extremely simplified visualization just for the sake of understanding. 
in reality it would be much more complex. Now the most notable feature is the existence of a centralized network storage. This can be a SAN or NAS, SAN being storage area network, NAS being network attached storage. Now for those of you who don't know what a network storage is, these systems provide the ability to centrally store data over the network so that you don't have to store it locally on the servers. Now the network storage provides a lot of advantages to database systems like these. Your storage becomes extremely easy to manage. Again, these systems are highly scalable which means you can scale up or scale down your storage on demand. Also, these systems are fault tolerant and provide some performance benefits over local storage even though that's debatable. Anyways, these network storage systems are extremely popular and are deployed in almost all corporate IT infrastructure. Now the second thing to note is that all the processing happens on few high-end database servers. Now these servers can be physical or virtual. The database application runs on these servers. Usually there will be more than one server for high availability. They can do this by using some kind of cluster application or by using database replication techniques. Again, these servers can either share the same storage or have separate replicated storage for fault tolerance. Now even if one of these servers goes down, the other server can simply bring up its instance of the database application so that there is no interruption to the database service. Also, there can be more than one server active at any given point of time in an active-active configuration for load sharing the client connections. Now, the tape drives are low-cost storage devices that can be used to archive old data and move it out from the central storage to free up space. Now that we have discussed the various features, let's talk about some of the challenges these systems face when dealing with big data. The first one is that one job or one query has to be executed by one server. Now even though there can be multiple servers sharing the client connections in an active-active configuration, one job or one query submitted by a client has to be executed by one server wherever it hits. Now remember, these servers are usually high-end servers, which means they would be having high configurations of memory with multi-core and multi-threaded CPUs. Still, the data has to wait in queue while the query is being executed sequentially. Now this creates a huge bottleneck when you're dealing with data at the scale of big data. Now distributions like SQL and Oracle do provide a technique called as parallelism, which is basically launching multiple process or threads for a single query to achieve parallel query execution. However, this is not as effective or as flexible as the Hadoop MapReduce. Now don't worry, we will be discussing MapReduce in detail in the coming sessions. For now, just know that MapReduce is a technique or mechanism used by Hadoop to parallelly process data. Now the second challenge arises from the fact that large amounts of data has to be transferred over the network. This transfer happens over what we call as storage networks. These network links can use technologies like iSCSI, Fiber or even Ethernet in case of NAS. Now even though these links have extremely high bandwidth, anywhere from 2 Gbps to as high as 16 Gbps, transferring data repeatedly for each job or query over these links can create huge bottlenecks when you scale to big data. Now you can add more links to increase the throughput, but you should remember that these network storage links can be extremely costly. Setting up and upgrading a network storage infrastructure is a costly affair and you should keep that in mind. We have now discussed the features and challenges faced by the traditional database infrastructure design. Now let's discuss the Hadoop infrastructure design and how it tackles these challenges. Now here we can see a basic visualization of the Hadoop infrastructure. It usually contains several commodity bare metal servers into what is called a Hadoop cluster. By commodity I mean medium to low end servers and by bare metal I mean physical servers. Now the most notable difference is the absence of any separate storage systems. The Hadoop framework, unlike the traditional database application, incorporates its own storage layer within its framework. Now the absence of any network storage technologies means data has to be stored locally on the servers. Which means we sysadmins have to do something we haven't been doing for years. That's right, buy servers with local disks. I have already mentioned in the previous section that virtualizing storage using network storage technologies is extremely popular and has been a decade-long tradition now. 
We are so used to seeing all those diskless blade servers that for some of you, this might seem like a step backward. However, this approach addresses one of the main challenges faced by traditional database systems in dealing with big data, that is movement of huge amounts of data over the network. Locality of resources is central to Hadoop design and performance. In principle, processing should happen wherever the data is present locally. This minimizes the amount of data that has to travel over the network which drastically reduces the data processing time. Now, unlike traditional database systems, which store data in a centralized manner, either by using network storage or even local storage, Hadoop stores data in a distributed fashion. This means a large file is first broken into chunks or blocks that is distributed across the various nodes in the cluster. This enables Hadoop to parallelly process data across various nodes using the combined strength of multiple servers. Now, the Hadoop designers have put in a lot of effort to make it a bulletproof fault-tolerant system capable of gracefully handling multiple node failures. The Hadoop design doesn't depend on the use of fancy servers, but is specifically designed to run on commodity infrastructure. This means Hadoop considers a scenario of multiple node failure as a normal occurrence. Hence, it incorporates data replication across various nodes, job rescheduling and other backup mechanisms to deal with such scenario without causing interruption to the client services. Now, each of these servers or nodes have specific tasks and responsibilities in the Hadoop cluster, depending on the Hadoop process or component that is running on them. Now, as I mentioned before, Hadoop ecosystem consists of two core software layers, the storage layer and the processing layer. All the other Hadoop ecosystem tools like HBase, Scoop, Spark, etc. make use of these two layers to function and perform data operations. Now remember, these two are software layer and hence I cannot show them in the infrastructure layout. Both these layers are made up of several Java components that would run as separate Java programs on all these nodes. Now on a side note, Apache Hadoop has been totally developed and coded in Java, which is also true for its related distributions. This means that each component of the Hadoop framework is nothing but a Java program that would run as a JVM on any of these nodes. Now, I will be using this term JVM a lot and hence it's important that you understand what it is. JVM or Java Virtual Machine is an abstract environment created by the Java runtime environment to execute a Java code. The JVM reserves or allocates the required system resources like memory, registers, class files, jar files, etc. required to run a Java code. This somewhat looks like a virtual environment created specifically to execute the Java code and hence the name Java Virtual Machine. It is also responsible to deallocate those resources once the code has completed execution. Moving on. Now, both the storage layer and the processing layer can be said to consist of a master service and a slave service. For example, in case of the storage layer, which is HDFS, the master service is called the name node. Now, remember, when I say name node, I'm not referring to a particular server or machine but to the Java component that is running on the server, which actually performs that role. I can actually stop the name node service here and start it here so that this becomes the new name node. Hence, the structure is not important as any of these nodes can run any of the Hadoop services. I can even run more than one service on the same server so that it can perform more than one role in the Hadoop framework. Now, the clients would not have access to the internal secured Hadoop network which is usually dedicated for the Hadoop cluster. All the client-facing tools and interfaces are usually installed on separate client-facing nodes called edge nodes. Now in real world, a production Hadoop cluster can consist anywhere from 10 to 50,000 nodes. However, for testing purposes, you can run all the Hadoop services on one system itself, provided it has enough system resources. But then it defeats the purpose of distributed processing. So don't do it unless it's just for lab purposes. As per estimates of 2011, Yahoo has by far the most number of nodes in its massive Hadoop cluster at over 42,000. Facebook, on the other hand, has the largest publicized data size even though it runs just on 2,000 nodes.